Normally, I read a passage of scripture to begin my message, but today, scripture will come at the end. It will have the final word. Today's Pentecost. It's 50 days after the events of Easter, religion changed forever. In the cross of Christ, God identified with the brown body that was murdered by state violence and vindicated the victim who cried out, it is finished. Let this scapegoating mechanism be exposed for what it is in that Jesus unmasked the unjust nature of the powers that be. Then the nature of God's presence in the world was transformed. The temple curtain was torn in two, and the glory of God was exposed to come out of the man-made structures and institutions and find its home in the new body of Christ, the people of God. The events of Pentecost were radically illuminating. Thus, the symbolism of the tongues of fire, God's spirit had come to all flesh. This is the decentering of God's power to the margins and the democratization of religion. The church is essentially Pentecostal. I'm not talking about the gift of tongues only, because the miracle of Pentecost is not that people spoke in tongues that weren't their own, it's that people heard the message in their own tongue. People heard the message of God's love in ways that they could understand, as if it was their own native tongue. God was communicating through ordinary women and men, not just those with religious titles and education. God was pleased to speak through the children of God by pouring out Holy Spirit power on all flesh. In a fulfillment of Joel chapter 2, that daughters and sons would dream dreams and would prophesy. Pentecost is my favorite day of the church calendar. Not just because of the liturgical flair or the changing of the colors of the pyramids that decorate the sanctuaries. Not just because it's the birthday of the church as it gets called. Pentecost is my favorite day because the DNA of the church is that we communicate the message in ways that people can understand it. Speaking in ways that every different tribe and nation can hear and receive the good news of God's work in the world. As Methodists, we take this really seriously. God's presence in each person means that they are vectors of God's ongoing work in the world. And that their experience of that divine, transcendent, eternal work is a valid location for both revelation and reflection. We added it to our inherited Anglican triad of scripture, tradition, and reason. We added the fourth component of our Wesleyan quadrilateral, experience. We want to experience what we believe, and we want to believe what we experience. And then we let that experience inform us, form us, and transform our world. This is part of why we have a historical commitment to things like the abolition of slavery that was spearheaded by Methodists around the globe. This is especially true for liberal Methodists. To our religious commitment, we add a layer of prioritizing the inherent worth and value of every individual. Every life matters. When we see an atrocity repeated over and over again for a certain demographic of our population, in this case, unarmed black men, being victimized and disproportionately targeted, we cry out in lament at that injustice built into the legacy of racism in this country, we rail against the nature of our whiteness in being complicit with the historical policies that police black bodies differently. We cannot stand idly by at the systematic nature of racism in America, and it makes us sick 
to learn about the experiences of whole communities of color being targeted for different treatment over the last 400 years, actually 500 years in the legacy of colonialism. We teach our children red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in Jesus' sight. And the Bible says, if one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. Jesus said that if even one sparrow falls to the ground, that God's concern was there. We mourn, not just because one part of our body is hurting, but we are experiencing the convulsions of that sickness in our whole society. Dr. King famously said, in the end we will remember not the words of our enemy, but the silence of our friends. So we can remain silent no longer. We must speak up and stand with our sisters and brothers who are hurting. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we must also embrace our prophetic voice and speak in tongues that are not our own so that all may hear the message of God's love and justice in ways that they can hear. Not just the language that we are comfortable speaking, but in a language foreign to ourselves so that the dignity and worth of every soul can hear and receive in the ways that matter most to them they can hear the utterances. Black lives matter. Every life matters. Red lives matter. Brown lives matter. And if that is not true, then we cannot say every life matters. So we raise our collective voice to say that we will stand against the systems of injustice and marginalization that have been put in place in order to expose the continued scapegoating mechanism that plagues our country to unmask the powers that be which perpetuate the ongoing persecution of our sisters and brothers who bear the image of God, the Imago Dei, and on whose tinted flesh God poured out Holy Spirit power. The importance of every single life and every single person and community is of infinite value and worth to the God we cry out to. Hear the prophet Amos again today. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice at the city gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, in all the squares there will be wailing, and in all of the streets they shall say, Alas, alas, for they shall call the farmers to mourning, and to wailing those who are skilled in lamentation. And in all of the vineyards there will be wailing, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if a man fled from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. It is not the day of the Lord, darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offering of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps or organs, I will not listen. But let justice roll down. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 
Hey, it be so. Amen.